What is the complement of a graph? That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. We'll begin with a quick instructive example using this graph here. Notice that this is a four cycle graph. Now what is the complement of this graph? Well, for starters, the complement of a graph is denoted like this. The name of the graph with a line over it. And the complement of a graph has the same vertex set as the original graph, so we'll just start off by pasting that. And then, to put it simply, the complement of a graph will have the opposite set of edges. So if two vertices are adjacent in a graph, they will not be adjacent in the complement. So we'll erase all of these edges. And then if two vertices are not adjacent in a graph, they will be adjacent in the complement. These two vertices as well are not adjacent in the original, so they are adjacent in the complement. So that's a quick look at what the complement of a graph is. It has the same vertex set, and it has, in a way, the opposite edge set. And here is a more rigorous definition. The complement of a graph G, written as G with a line over it, has the same vertex set as G, and for every pair of distinct vertices, U and V, in that original graph G, UV is an edge of the complement if and only if it's not an edge of the original graph. So like I was saying, you can think of it as the complement having the opposite edge set. Where we have edges in the original graph, we do not in the complement. And where we don't have edges in the original, we do in the complement. Also notice by definition that if we take the complement of a graph, so in this case we get this, and then we take the complement of the complement, we would just end up with the original graph. So the complement of a complement brings us back to where we started. If you were beginning to study the complements of graphs on your own, there's a good chance you might run into an example like this one we're about to go over. So here we've got a graph that we will call G. Let's practice what we just learned and find the complement of G. And just for kicks, I'll label these vertices for fun, A, B, C, D. Remember that the complement of a graph has the same vertex set as the original, so we'll begin again with copy and paste. Then, two vertices in the complement can only be adjacent if they were not adjacent in the original, so all of those original edges have got to go away. Then, B and D are not adjacent in G, so they will be adjacent in G complement. A and D are not adjacent in G, so A and D are adjacent in G complement, and A and C will be adjacent in G complement. Now, do you notice anything interesting about these two graphs? They're not equal because they do have different edge sets. B and D, for example, do not make an edge in G, whereas they do in G complement. However, these graphs do have the exact same structure, so they're what we call isomorphic graphs, which you may or may not be familiar with. And you can see that more clearly if I rotate G. You can see it's got the exact same structure as its complement, so that's pretty cool. And also, remember what I said earlier, the complement of G complement is just G. So it's also true that G complement has the same structure as its complement, because its complement is G. Graphs that are isomorphic to their complement graphs are called self-complementary. So that's a pretty darn neat property. Now let's take a look at one more example that will illustrate another fun property for us. Here we've got a graph we will call H, and take note of the fact that H is disconnected. One more time, we'll practice our skills and find H complement. We start off with the same vertex set. Then, wherever there was an edge before, there cannot be an edge now. And then, every pair of distinct vertices not adjacent in H need to be adjacent in H complement. So I'll go ahead and make all of these edges. So here we have H complement. What do you notice about H complement? Well, it turns out H complement is a connected graph. There exists a path connecting every pair of distinct vertices in this graph. This is an example of a general property. If G is a disconnected graph, then G complement will always be a connected graph. 
and I think that green might be a little hard to read, so let me just change its color to purple. So that's pretty neat. If you've got a disconnected graph, take its complement, and that will always be a connected graph. And tell me in the comments if you think the converse of this statement is true, that if a graph is connected, then its complement will be disconnected. And as far as this statement goes that we just went over, I won't take the time to prove it in this lesson, but it's a pretty fun and straightforward proof, so try proving it on your own. And I think that's where we'll leave it for today, so I hope this video helped you understand what the complement of a graph is. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. The situation's how you